I'm Hannah Moore, CFP, a practicing financial planner and educator. I'm on a mission to change the way people think and talk about money. Let's get started. I get this question sometimes of, do I need to really budget my money? And it's a really, really interesting question. And one that as a financial planner, you know, it could seem obvious that I would say, well, of course you need to budget your money, but that's actually not the case. One of the advantages that I have as a financial planner is that I get to look into many different couples and families financial situation. And so I just wanna share a couple of the things and my thoughts around this idea of, do we really need to budget? So there are really three different camps that I kind of see people fall into on this question. So I'm gonna walk through each one of those camps and I'm also gonna tell you what are the keys, no matter which camp you fall in, that you need to be aware of on your budgeting. Uh, so let's start out. So the first of all is going to be uh, the group where money is tight, right? I've been there. Oh, very well likely could get there again someday, but money is tight, right? Where you, I knew, I remember, I used to know exactly how much was in my checking account. I knew how much exactly like every transaction would be um, on my account and how that would impact impact my my financial situation, right? There were so many times where I was under $100 in my checking account and that's what I was that's what I was budgeting with, right? And if you're in those spots where you are barely making ends meet, uh, where no matter all of your income's coming in and all going out to expenses, then yes, budgeting is critically important for you to get in that situation or in that situation. And it's critically important that you're managing your money. Oftentimes these, if you're in this situation, you may already be already doing, be doing that budgeting. Now I'll tell you why it was so important for me. Um, and what I see when people who are in that situation is because the consequences of not budgeting are so extreme, right? This is how people rack up the credit card debt. This is how people have overdrafts that just completely spin out of control and cost hundreds and hundreds of dollars that you don't have. And when you're in that situation, that can feel like just the mountain that you can't overcome. Uh, so it's, it's very much, if you are in this really tight financial situation, yes, it's incredibly important that you budget and you look at your money because it is so easy to be racking up this credit card debt. And, and it's so difficult to get out of this uh, credit card debt. I often refer to credit card debt as like the cancer of your financial situation. Uh, and it's something that you just need we can have a whole other conversation about that but you really want to make sure that you can if you can avoid credit card debt now certainly there are cases where you can avoid it and that's okay right we are not here to say we are not here just to beat you down if that that's the case you know i have had clients who've come in who have expressed how grateful they are for their credit cards uh, they were able to afford you know medical expenses they were able to get out of difficult situations and so it's really being this this awareness of, of your situation but when i look at this question of should i be budgeting my money do i need to be budgeting my money if you are going paycheck to paycheck or living on a tight budget then yes generally you do need to be budgeting budgeting your money now the second camp that i want to talk about is this camp where money you have excess right there there's a buffer there for you uh where money coming in you know there's usually maybe a little bit left over every month you can you don't necessarily have to budget down to the penny i had this client one time tell me uh when we were talking about budgeting he's like i just don't see a need to it we have this rhythm of our spending right which i think is a really really cool idea this rhythm of our spending of how much money it is that we spend every month uh, sometimes we go a little higher sometimes we get a go a little lower but we kind of know where we are in this in this space and i think that was just such a, a brilliant way of putting it by my client uh, that saying that yeah there are times when you have enough you know, right, your, your income coming, you know, income expenses, you know, they match, right? Not match, but you have, you have excess on it. Now, what I'll say about this group, there's a couple things. One, budgeting helps you be able to achieve other goals. So for example, it'll help you go on vacation with your family. It will help you buy a newer van, right? Uh, van is one of our big financial goals right now. Um, it'll help you be able to get to that, that next financial goal or that next thing that you want in your life. And so when you look at like how you prioritize your life, right? What are those values? As I like to say, the things that are most important to you about your finances, it could be that we want to go on a vacation every year with our family. And in order to do that, we're going to need to budget, right? And so those, that's just a trade-off that you have with this of saying, okay, we don't need to budget. We can prioritize the comfort of not budgeting 
over being able to do some of these other other things that we we want to do. And you know what? That's a fair choice. Right? There are certainly times in my life where that's been a priority of just like, I just need convenience. Like, yes, I know I'm going to be trading off things, um, but it's okay for where we are right now. Uh, and so that's one of the pieces that I think is in this middle kind of category, you just have to be really aware of what are those decisions and what are those trade-offs that you're making? Um, and are you giving up the convenience, right? The convenience of not having to budget every single dollar uh, with, with the, you know, knowing that there might be some extra things that you could be able to do in life that, that you're not able to do right now. Um, so again, I'm going to come back to with all these groups, what I think are absolutely critical that you do. So no matter where you fall in this budgeting, um, absolutely critical, critical for that. The other thing with this middle group uh, is that I think that I think is so important is that you know what the big like rocks are, if you will, uh, in in your budget. And so this is where this is where it worries me in this in this category, where people don't have you know a basic financial plan in place. So they don't know how much money they need to be saving every month in retirement or for retirement. They don't know um, some of these other saving goals that they have, they don't have a clear picture of what this looks like. And that's what worries me about when I see somebody who's in this category where they're not necessarily budgeting because maybe they don't need to, it's not essential for them. Um, but have you put in these big boulders or these big rocks into your financial plan that will allow you the flexibility to do what you want later? Uh, and so that's, critically important for people in this in this category is to be able to look at their budget make sure that it's aligned with their financial goals do you have a plan for what you're going to do when you retire and i know it's it's hard to imagine that like i cannot truly fathom where i will be when i'm 65 and possibly looking at retirement like i i can't truly can't envision my life right um outside of like diapers right now but i think that's incredibly important right is knowing what are those big blocks knowing that you're contributing to those uh, every every month or whatever that looks like. So if you're in that middle category, make sure you have a plan in place uh, because that's gonna be really, really important. And that's gonna let you know, like, am I on track, right? Uh, and I think it's, it's one of the big pieces that people, people miss in, in that category. Okay, now let's talk about this third category. So first category people, yes, they absolutely need a budget because money is so tight. The second category is that there is some cushion on this. Like they don't necessarily need to be budgeting, you know, every day for, you know, for everything. Uh, but it's so important that you make sure that you have kind of those big boulders kind of in your, in your budgeting or in your spending already. And this third category is gonna be people that there is just more money coming in than they spend right now this can look at a lot of different levels so i have clients right now who are living just off of their social social security check and i think they fall in this category where the money coming in is greater than what their normal expenses are they have this rhythm to their finances right uh where where they they know they have their financial plan on place and they know that they they don't need to be budgeting every month um or every you know doing this forward-looking budget now it is certainly a fortunate place, place to be, and a lot of people kind of aspire to to get to that point. One of the things that I'll often see in this camp and people in this camp is that they have budgeted a lot in the past. Um, I was just talking to somebody recently who was saying, you know, I don't budget anymore, um, but I did for so many years that it's just second nature. Like I, you know, it's second nature to just kind of with our spending habits, like we know what is enough. And I think that's absolutely critical in this in this third third category of where your income, you know, is going to be far more um, than than not. Now, one of the things that I said earlier is that there are some characteristics that need to be common between all of these. So the first one is just what I mentioned is that they know how much is enough. Right. This is like one of the most central foundations to financial planning that we don't talk about enough uh, is is what life do you want to live right what does it look like what is your number how much money do you need to be living off of every single month uh, to really be living with like the joy that you want to be living with uh, to be living the life that you want to be living knowing that number is so so critical to success because i don't care how much money you have doesn't matter if you have ten dollars ten thousand or ten million and yes i have worked with those people who have ten million dollars if you don't know how much is enough in your financial situation you won't be happy 
you will always be chasing for something more. And so the biggest secret, no matter where you fall in this budget, is knowing what is enough. And this doesn't have to be crazy, right? I had a client who they came in and they were working on, they were working on their budget and one spouse was far more budget conscious than the other spouse. Uh, budgeting does not come natural to some people and it comes very natural to others, which is kind of a fun dynamic on this. And it was clear that for one spouse, they had enough, they had plenty, they had excess. To the other spouse, they felt like they were living on such a tight lifestyle, right? They just felt so constrained. And so what I really encouraged and pressed for the spouse that was feeling that constraint was saying, okay, let's walk through this. What would you want? What would life look like if you didn't feel this constraint on your budget? How much would be enough? And they were one where there was, a, you know, there was, there was a income expenses. There was, there was room there for them to be spending more money. And so what was great is that spouse was able to start articulating things. And it was, you know, I think I would want to be able to go out with my friends once or twice for lunch um, every month. I'm like, okay, so hundred dollars maybe on the high end of what that looks like. Um, and it was like, yeah, that, that, that could be enough for us or for, you know, for, for the spouse. And so we kind of walked through what would this look like and imagine that life wasn't money, wasn't so tight. What would that look like? Put that, write that down, right? Because that is absolutely central of knowing how much is enough and then revisiting that, right? Because it does change over time. I spend a lot more money than I, when I, than I ever thought that I would be spending when I was 25. But I also have young children, I'm running a business. There's, there's other factors that are like compounding in that. But getting really clear about how much money would it be to be enough for you, uh, absolutely critical. And I'm telling you, it does not matter if you're living off a of fixed income and social security, and it doesn't matter if you have 10 plus million dollars. This is the same thing that goes through through all of these. It's the same thread, right? This is about how we relate to our money and understanding what's what's enough. Because the trap that people fall into is that they never have enough and they keep chasing it. I've seen it over and over again. The second piece is knowing, having awareness, being very aware of where your money is going um, and, and having an awareness of how much you are spending. So if you're in this first game of money is tight, you are very, very aware, usually, of where your money is going. Sometimes not, and that's how, you know, people can either, you know, be okay, uh, or, it can, you know, the money can get out of, out of control. Uh, so that, you know, credit card debt, things like that. Um, no matter which category you are, you wanna be aware of where you, you're spending. Oftentimes with clients, when they're coming in and reviewing uh, their finances with me, we're just looking, it's, it's often a touch point of just saying, okay, how much money are you spending every month and every year? And often clients will do that work before they come in. Uh, and I, don't, I mean, some, some do, right? Um, but a lot of people, like they're kind of doing that because they have to come into my office or you know, meet with some Zoom or whatever. Um, but it's all about that awareness of being like, is this how we want to be spending our money? Um, and having having those decisions, right? At, at some point, we're all adults here, right? We, we can make our own decisions about money. But I've had clients who are in this kind of the third category, like, oh, we're fine, but they didn't have that awareness piece. And they come back in and we're revisiting their finances and they realize they spent $100,000 more in a year, which was just jaw dropping for them where they're like, oh my gosh, are you serious? Like, how did we do this? And it was this awareness, right? So they don't necessarily need to be budgeting their money every month, but they need to be looking back that awareness piece will give you, you know, the 80, 20 rule. How do you, you know, how do you move the needle? How can you move the needle 80% with 20, 20% of the work? And for me, that's awareness. That's getting very clear about what it is that you want to be doing with your money. Very clear about where have you spent money? What is the, what is, what is your level of spending? Um, and then making sure that, that you've built the systems and everything into, into support that. So one other just kind of asterisk I want to add to all of this is that there has also been times in my life, certainly, where I wasn't able to budget, uh, where things were just really, really hard in life. Um, and so I just want to put that asterisk out there of, you know, we talk about this, assuming that everybody is able to do this all the time and, and without issue. And I just want to put this asterisk out there that there are times when you may not be able to budget and life is really really hard um, whether that be traumatic events whether that could be you know there's just a whole host of different situations and the 
sometimes surviving is winning. And, and so, you know, it can be really easy to be like, I should have, I should have budgeted in this. I should have done this. And just like I was telling you guys, I had a client who was so grateful for credit cards because it got them through some really, really hard times. Uh, this is all about, you know, recognizing like what it is that you need when you need it. And I think, I think that's just an important piece that often gets lost in this budgeting conversation of, of, you know, just saying like, you have to budget, you have to budget, you have to budget. And yes, that can be good. That can be very, very good. And it can also be true that you find yourself in a different situation uh, where you have, you don't necessarily need to be budgeting because perhaps you hate it. I think that's fair. Um, or there's other things going on in your life that make, make that even more difficult. And you just need to kind of get through some of that. So just want to put that um, and let you just know that, you know, your finances really are personal on this. And yes, wouldn't hurt everybody to budget, but I know that the reality and what I see with clients is that not all of my clients budget. In fact, probably the majority of my clients don't budget. Um, they have an awareness. They know how much is enough. They know that rhythm of their life, but they're not budgeting every month. Uh, so just wanted to, to, to share some of this information uh, with you guys. Uh, one of the tools that we made for being aware of your budget is the budgeting blocks, because one of the things I learned very quickly is that spreadsheets don't speak to everybody. And so that is one of the things that we want to just make sure you guys know that um, if you guys are looking to, for awareness around your budget, um, the budgeting blocks is a really great tool to be able to do that in a really fun and accessible way. Like you're actually playing with blocks around the table, like on the table as you are looking at your budget. Uh, it just helps connect things in a really, really cool way. Um, but anyway, I hope that's helpful for you guys. I would love to hear your feedback on that uh, as well. Thanks for listening to this episode of Everyday Money with Hannah Moore. If you like what you heard, subscribe and check out livewealthynow.com. We have a lot more resources to help you live wealthy now.